Hey everyone. Yes, I'm back again. And uh, I now have Carolina Osorio and yeah. Katya Stolenly. Please correct me if I've said your Stolenly. name. Stolenly, yeah, pretty close. Very close. Okay, great. So we were just talking in Spanish because we got one from Argentina and one from, from Colombia. Encantado. Yes. <laughs> uh, so thank, thank you so much for being here. So Catalina and, and, and Dr. Katy were both, both ladies were going to be speaking at the Best You Expo. We would have been there today. But yeah. um, anyway, we're here live. So I'm going to read a very brief um, profile. So Katia and Carolina, co-founder of Inner Growth Lab. Katia is a board certified psychiatrist with passionate about behavior modification, skill development and mindset optimization. I was saying before, we need a lot of that. And then Carolina is a board certified psychiatrist too, with whole passion. So it's both the same. Okay, Carolina, you, please correct me now anyway. So tell me, what is your expertise and what are you helping people with now? So we are both psychiatrists. Um, I work in the field of addictions. So there's a lot of mindset change and behavior modification, building new habits. And uh, do you want to talk about what you do? Yeah. So um, uh, I'm, a, I'm a psychiatrist, but I, my expertise is in a geriatric population. So basically my work is uh, focused on um, how living your life well so that we can uh, uh, make your brain be as healthy as long as you can. So we're not, I, uh, my message is not about lifespan, but about health span. And so in order for us to age well, we have to take care of ourselves from now, from when we're kids, it's, it's all interconnected. And so because we are both psychiatrists, um, what we do is modification skills, everything that we know are going to make that brain healthy. And what brought us together is that we both went through burnout. We both uh, got to a pretty low point um, working and start, started talking together and realized, oh, you're going through the same thing as I am and didn't even realize. And working in our journey together to overcome burnout, we started realizing there's so much out there that you can do. There's so much evidence-based tools and skills that you can implement. And with our background on the brain and neuroscience, putting all that together was really meaningful for us. It changed our journeys, our daily uh, experience going to work. And we decided we want to share this with other people that burnout is very prevalent. Um, we want to share this with people so that others can also go from surviving day to day into like thriving. We right. Want people to thrive. And so we are sort of like branching outside of orthodox medicine. Um, healthcare system is important, it's necessary for people who are very sick, but our message through our company is mostly prevention and education. So because we, there is so much in health that can be avoidable just by the way how we live our lives. And I was gonna say that obviously, you know, both of you together have, you know, you combined have, you know, great expertise. And, and obviously, you know, you, you are, you know, well, very knowledgeable. I, I find it interesting that, that first of you, both of you coming together yes, uh, yeah. with the expertise you have, very, very interesting. Right. Uh, and, and also that you both went through the same experience of, of burnout, right. you know, and, and right. that obviously what, what brought you together. So I, 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 I was, I can assume that these, these, these challenging times we have is, is a different type of burnout for people or, you know, from a relationship yeah. point of view, right. from not having the money coming in, from right. the uncertainty. So, right. so how do you see yourself helping customers and clients to get through these through these moments now? Well, actually, uh, we've been talking about this, and we're working on a little uh, a little bit of a workshop uh, for healthcare providers because the panic is such a big thing right now. I mean, you go to the store, there's no toilet paper, there's no essential stuff to buy. And uh, panic is not necessary. Sure, we do need to prepare, we do need to know the facts, what's going on, but panic is a choice. And unfortunately, the community around us, um, the attitude that the community is choosing, it's very contagious. And this, this panic that's going around is spreading faster than the coronavirus is spreading actually yeah 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 
and is that is this something is this something animalistic or prehistoric in that of, of having this hunter gather mentality that i've got to go out and and bring some food home and and then you know yeah, you yeah. see these people because we, we've all found them in the supermarket i know it's a joke but you, you see people with with toilet rolls for six years you know like well, where are you going you, you, right. where are you going with this right so um i'm going to give you like an analogy so you know for example when um somebody has a serious medical problem when you have a serious medical problem your ability to bounce back into health has to do with how much you took care of your body for many, many years. It's not something that you can do like at the last minute. So the same thing happens when we are faced with adversity. Um, even though we cannot predict exactly how we are all gonna uh, respond to adversity, the way how we have prepared ourselves mentally, emotionally, spiritually, socially, financially, all is going to be detrimental in the way how we rebound back from that state of fear and anxiety because those emotions are naturally going to come out because we are human beings and like you mentioned there is this um sort of like generational inheritance to the way how we behave and that has to do with a part of our brain called the limbic system in which where you have the amygdala and the amygdala is is, is a survival part of your brain so the amygdala is going to get activated in moments of adversity and intense survival so even for me that i feel i have pretty good skills and and you know i'm in the medical field so i quite of have a lot of good evidence information about the virus when I went to the store and I saw that there was no water, I felt anxiety and I felt worried. Um, did I panic and did I allow that fear and anxiety to control my behavior? No, but yes, I did felt it because I have an amygdala like everybody else. And because this is what our brains um, are, are teaching us in order to survive. So anxiety and fear to a certain point is absolutely necessary but then it is up to us how we can manage that. So what do you think the outcome is gonna be? Because a lot of people, you know, obviously uh, some people are solution driven and some yeah. people are, are focusing on the problem. It's obviously down to the mind and the brain and the quality yeah. of our thoughts, but it's also obviously down to, you know, what information are we receiving? You know, what are we surrounding ourselves with? Is it positive or is it negative news? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so, you know, I, I uh, you know, Katya and I, we have a mindset that we shouldn't be focused on the endpoint, but more on the process. Um, and so what can we do during these times instead of focusing on to when is it going to end, how long this is going to be? Because um, we don't know. Um, you know, the predictions are saying that we're going to be at our peak by mid-April. Um, so we're just sort of like entering um, the beginning, uh, leading to that midpoint. And, um, you know, a lot of states are doing different things. The government is trying to do the best they can under the circumstances, uh, but we all have been affected. So thinking or focusing on that endpoint, I think is just gonna cause more and more of that anxiety, that angst and that panicky feelings. Um, we both think that this is a, a time for us as, as in humanity, as in this world, is to come back to a very spiritual thought process, which is meaning. So what is the meaning in our lives? Meaning drives individuals to do great things. I believe most people who are at work, they do the work they do because it gives them meaning in life. And so when you are removed from your meaning and you're now stuck in your house, you're gonna start feel boredom and you're gonna start feel panicking. So we are gonna to need to start changing or refocusing our meaning to other areas to other things that we are going to be doing while we are adjusting to this new lifestyle for the next week, few weeks. Um, that also includes the fact that we as a society, we are very individualistic. And I believe that life is giving us this opportunity to say, hey, you know what? We're communal beings, we're social beings. How can we do best? So it's not about me reclusing myself because I'm gonna get sick. It's, I need to recluse myself because of my elderly, because of my children, because of this person. So we are taking that focus away from ourselves to the community. I love that. I love that, and 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 I and I and I appreciate that. I mean, I think I think a lot of it is around that meaning. So it's obviously then also about helping people, or then starting to identify not only what that meaning is, is but what are the the purpose. I mean, one of the things that obviously I've been focusing a lot is around your legacy because you know, take it like it or not, 
you know, at the end of the day, we are mortals. I think we we mm-hmm. we all yes, know that we, you know, that, yeah. that, that we are mortals, and some people think that they're going to be around forever. So they tend to procrastinate and leave, you know, the, the, the decisions. Yeah, I'll take care of that tomorrow. So you know, yes. the reality of of you know passing away is is more real in your life. So maybe this is a time to do a, a checklist, a, a bucket list of the things that you want to do and leave behind, and start focusing. And it might be about that, about building bridges. It might be about working on that. So so what's your thoughts around this, and how could people? What are the best tips and advice? For people to focus on their meaning and purpose well actually i think it's an it's a it, this is a great opportunity to do a little bit of that inner work oftentimes we try to get answers from outside to help us see what our value is or our meaning is but this this self um social distancing gives us that opportunity to take that time and uh ponder about what our meaning and values are um sorry go ahead go ahead I was going to say, um, because we want to give people advice on all sorts of things, yes. what would you say would be uh, good things to read, recommended books, for example, things oh, that you, yes. you know, that have helped you? Uh, yes. What would you say is, uh, for you personally and professionally? Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> this is our favorite topic. Yes. So um, I can start with uh, Captivate by uh, Vanessa Van Edwards. Or um, the last one that we were both reading, I thought that yes. was wonderful, is the one by Brendan Bouchard, High Performers Habits. I think Love that's it. a wonderful book. Um, a there's book. also a lot of shows and podcasts. Um, Lewis House has a really good podcast. Tom Bellew with Impact Theory. Um, those are my top two. And then uh, uh, Robin Sharma, his latest book, it's really amazing. Um, we also have been reading, um, okay. we can, but this is, this is in Spanish and it's by Victor Coppers, Coopers. He is a wonderful, he did, he's also someone who, uh, resonates to the way how we, um, do our work through our company. And, um, one more, uh, men's search for meaning, Victor Frankl. Oh, I've, 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 I've read, I've read that book. That, that, that's a fantastic book actually. Yes. Um, yes. It, it is, it is, it is. It is sad in a way because it talks about apathy and empathy, but but, yes. but, but it, and, and it's obviously based on on, on the on the Holocaust and obviously his experiences living it. But it's a great book. I'm going to recommend a couple of books. Sure. I'm going to recommend one now that I, I for me was brilliant, it, which I think is is very current, would be very good and appropriate now when we're bored at home and we're trying to do new things. And this was Atomic Habits by uh, James Clear. Great book. It's about creating new habits and creating new things. Um, and a book that I will always recommend to the day I die was a, I'm a massive fan, obviously, of Jim Ron, without a doubt. So I love Jim Ron. But the book that I, the subtle art of not giving an F U C K. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I love that. <laughs> I have that book too. <laughs> uh, and I'm just trying to find the title because I always get the title wrong. But it's just about to, The Mindful Athlete. athlete is a great oh, book from oh, that's uh, an amazing book too. George Mumford. He's, he's brilliant. Yeah. A book that I love that really kind of really triggered all sorts of fantastic ideas is Elizabeth Gilbert's big magic. Um, brilliant book, brilliant book. Wow. And that, and the reason about that, or why I think that book is so great is because it talks about ideas and, and the previous panel that I had before we were talking about ideas. This isn't a time when, when we, we, we can be so creative and in her book, it talks about how ideas are like entities that they yeah. come and they're looking for someone to, to, to yeah. make them to become yeah. a reality. And, okay. and, and, if, and if they don't become a reality, then all of a sudden they go to someone else. And I'm sure we've all experienced that when we said, oh, I thought of that three years ago. And all of a sudden <laughs> it's invented. Right. So I'm a great believer that if you don't bring your, your ideas in, into reality, you know, they will find another home. And also I think it's your obligation to do so. Yes, um, for sure. All right, so we shared some great books here. You've given some some great advice, ladies. Um, mm-hmm. We'll do. We're, we're going to do one of these in, in Spanish the next time. So um, okay, nice. okay. absolutely. Vamos yes. a hacerlo en español porque hay mucho latino aquí en Los Angeles. Obviamente que sí. But what would you like to leave us with? Uh, what, what's your What's your thoughts on, on kind of what's next? What you are doing and and how people could implement some of the ideas that you are particularly doing, transitioning and moving forward to helping more and serving more. 
You know, um, attitude is one of the biggest things that are under our control. And uh, we are the only, per the only ones that can choose if we're gonna allow our attitudes to be shaped by the outers outside sources and the panic around us, or if we are going to choose an attitude that's gonna be helpful to us and to those around us. And since we've been talking about books, another great book that can help with um, the way that we're thinking and the attitude we choose is It Takes What It Takes by Trevor Moat. Um, also a great book about uh, neutral thinking because we are seeing a lot of catastrophic thinking around us and being able to, to face reality by what it is. I mean, it is what it is. This is what we're dealing with and being able to come at it with the facts of what it is and being able to thrive in today's day. I think that that is the, the biggest gift we can give ourselves right now. Well, that's all brilliant advice, ladies. So you were scheduled to be speaking at the Best You Expo. Now you have the new dates, the 7th and 8th of August. So what are you going to be sharing there with us in summer when it's tens of thousands of people and we can all high five and we can yes, say, yeah. what are you going to be so sharing? So our, fo our focus is going to be on, on burnout. Um, we're okay. going to explain that neuroscience, how burnout affects your brain, like literally makes changes in your brain. And then we're going to talk about the skills that you can use to reverse those changes in your brain that has been proven by brain imaging so that you can move from surviving into thriving. And we'll talk about the um, scientific method to wellness. So we, we've adapted the biopsychosocial spiritual model we use in medicine into actually our well-being and growth and personal development. Well, that's brilliant. And, and ladies and gentlemen, these ladies can actually say, you can trust me, I'm a doctor. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I can't, I normally say that you can trust me, I'm not to, but they can. So thank you so much, both of you. Lovely to get to meet you here uh, virtually and looking forward to seeing you. Um, Same here. Same here, super excited to be part of your community. Take care, lots of love. Bye-bye. All the best, thank you so much. Um, ladies and gents, I'll be back. I'm gonna be back in seven, eight minutes time. I'm gonna take, um, take this time to get some juice and have some something to drink. But I'm going to be back at 12.15 with Connie, Connie Ponturo and Kerry Conley. And uh, we're going to be talking, well, basically both of them are, one is, is it, Connie, it helps people with, with pain, uh, to live pain free. And, and then Kerry is going to be, she's an entrepreneur uh, and she, she, she does some great work around vision and helping people find uh, their, their vision uh, in life. Uh, she's got a great story personally. And she's a lovely, lovely, lovely lady. Thank you so much. And I'll see you soon. Take care. Lots of love.